Hey, welcome back. I'm Adam of the Wall Twins. But if this is your first time here with us, welcome. Consider subscribing and hit the notification bell so you don't miss anything that we do here in the Backyard Diner. Well, yes, I am flying solo today. I couldn't wait to bring you this one. And this one I am bringing solo for a very specific reason. Brett and I were together just a few weeks ago and we cooked some amazing New York strip steaks on the Pit Boss Sierra Griddle. That said, they didn't quite get a good sear on them and I personally just was not comfortable with that. We were, we were new with the Sierra Griddle. We were testing out temperatures and we didn't quite get the griddle hot enough. The more we worked with the griddle, the more we reached out to Pit Boss, the more we realized this thing can get screaming hot. So I wanna go ahead and redo these New York strip steaks, much to the chagrin of my family who is, ah oh, darn, I guess we're having New York strip steaks again. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you the process, but first let me get to the groceries so you know what exactly it is that I'm doing here with this one. All right, so this is just a little bit different than Brett and I dressed it up last time. What I've got here to, these are just about 12 ounce steaks. Also some unsalted butter. And for this one, rather than putting fresh garlic in, we got this amazing garlic flavored American extra virgin olive oil that was pressed here in the olive orchards of Georgia. Our good friend Eugene Owen sent us this a little while back and we absolutely love this. We don't get to use the garlic as often. I thought, man, what a perfect opportunity to do this. But right now, let me just tell you what I got going on. I've got the griddle set. We've got three burners, but I'm only using two. The far left, I've got all the way to high heat. I'm trying to let that get up to temperature where I'm going to do a quick sear on both sides of these steaks. Once those have a good sear, probably about one to two minutes because we're looking at right about an inch thick cut on these. So that's not bad inch, maybe inch and a half, probably closer to an inch. We'll do about a minute, minute and a half on each side. Then we'll flip them. And then once those are done, we'll pull them over to the other side of the griddle. My far right side is set on low. So the idea is we're going to get a good sear, move it over and then continue to cook. And we'll use a lot of butter and just kind of baste it. And you'll get to see the process of how we love to do our steaks on the griddle. I'm gonna go ahead and get to this one. All right, so one thing that I did wanna point out here real quick while I've got the griddle started, I've got a couple of dark spots right here. People have asked about those. I am actually waiting. I'm gonna be doing a deep clean video to show how to pull those out because that's the nice thing about ceramic is you can actually get rid of some of these stains. So I'll have a video forthcoming on that, but I just wanted to point that out to you. All right, so one thing I wanna point out, this thing's just just about to temp, so I'm gonna get going on it. When I am done, I'm gonna pull these and rest these in foil for about 10 minutes. I'm not looking forward to that part because I don't wanna let them sit too long, but we wanna let those juices marinate uh, to marry in really well and give us a really, really juicy, good steak. So my, my hope is to get these to medium rare and uh, we'll go from there. So I wanna get internal temp to about 120 degrees is all. Right now I'm pushing close to about 500 degrees. I wanted this right about 500, so I'm happy I'm just about there. I'm gonna lay a little bit of oil and we're gonna get these cooking. Right there, right there, and, oh, listen to that sizzle. There we go. We're gonna give those a good minute. Oh, that garlic, do you smell that, Parker? That smells good, huh? So the idea with the sear is you wanna get some good coloration on the outside without burning it or overcooking because it's gonna dry out. So that's why the thickness of the steak definitely makes a difference. We're looking at a little over an inch on these. This one's maybe a little bit thinner where the fat cap is or the fat is on the, on the far side. It's a little bit thicker uh, and that's, that's the same for both of them. So I'm gonna let them go about a minute and a half and then I'll give them a flip. All right, it's been closer to two minutes actually. I wanted to make sure I get some good sear on that. So we're gonna go ahead and flip it and see what we got. Got a little stickage. Now the sear is gonna have a non-stick surface, but obviously when you're on high heat searing, you're gonna get some sticking. So that is okay. Oh, but that's all that flavor. Guess we're gonna have to add a little bit more salt and pepper in there. Oh, that's looking good. Little more olive oil down. We got a good sear. I was gonna put a little more oil down, forgot to put some more on that side. Listen, it happens, it's all kind of happening quick. So, all right, we'll go two more minutes, then we'll pull it over and just continue the cooking process. All right, about to transfer those over. So I'm gonna go ahead, lay some oil down. We're gonna get some pats of butter in there as well. Right there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and pull these. Now, one thing I wanna do is I wanna lay the fat cap down on the side, you can see a good sear on that one there. Just for 20 seconds or so, just enough to seal that up. Good, and then we're gonna come and pull that over. Do the same thing here. Another good sear on that side. 
Now I put the olive oil down before I put the butter. So it's gonna keep the butter from burning right away. This is still hot, this, even though this is lower. Um, I'm gonna bring this up to medium low, just a little bit, it was about 360 degrees. So I'm gonna bring it up just a little bit more. We've got some color there. All right, we're just gonna let those continue to cook through. Of course, can't forget about the other part. And for a little bit of the flavor that we lost, a little salt. A little pepper. There we go. So now at this point, I'm just gonna use some of the oil and the butter and baste this and really turn these about every one to two minutes till I reach the internal temp of uh, 120. This will take probably eight minutes at this point, hopefully, all things considered. We'll see how long it takes, but we're just gonna watch it and go. We love this basting process. It seems so simple and so silly, but it just tastes so good. Okay, with that butter on, we're gonna go ahead and give that a flip. Get the butter under there. And because you can never have too much butter, right? Yeah, the butter's jumping. That's okay, more buttery goodness to scoop and baste. So this would be similar to keeping this in a nice hot uh, seared uh, skillet if you were doing this and then basting. Look at that. Those are amazing. <laughs> okay, so let me go ahead and flip these one more time. And they might be just about ready to pull. I'm gonna flip them. I'm gonna flip these and temp them, and we'll see where we're at. Little bit quicker than I thought. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these because they're almost at 120. I've got one at 119, one right at 120. I'm gonna pull these and set these in, in the foil. So we're gonna go ahead and get ready for some B-roll, let them set, and then we'll cut them up. Parker, are you ready for this? You know, I know that Brett's and mine tasted really good. Cannon just pointed out, this thing's dripping like crazy. I'm gonna set this down and grab a plate. There are so many different ways uh, to season up your steak and you do it the way you like it. To me, simple salt, pepper, and butter is ideal. The garlic uh, olive oil is also gonna be next level, which I'm super excited. And I'm really happy with the way this performed. This looks just as good as any steak we've ever cooked. I'm anxious to see how this is. Now, like we say, it can look amazing. Cannon, does it look amazing? Yep. <laughs> it does look amazing. Like we say, it can smell amazing. Can I get a smell, yeah? Smell, yeah. Thanks, Cannon. Cannon's over here, jumped in real quick. I've had all my kids out here helping me tonight. But if this doesn't taste amazing, then this was all for naught. Here, Cannon, why don't you take one? All right, I'm gonna grab this one right here. Cheers, I'll eat to that, my brother. <laughs> well, there it is. Got that pink right in the middle. The, the flavor is on point. This thing is absolutely amazing. Whatever your favorite cut of steak is, this is the best way to do it. This is how we've done our filet mignon. This is how we've done our ribeye. Now chalk up New York strips, same way, and it works the same, just as good. This was so good. Like I said, I'm losing a little bit of daylight, but steaks, they can be done on the ceramic surface on the Pit Boss Sierra Griddle. Again, the Pit Boss Sierra Griddle is a Walmart exclusive. Keep checking your Walmarts. They are coming here really quickly. I know people have said they haven't been able to find them yet. It's because it's going to be awesome when they drop. So keep checking your stores. They will have this. It is 
backed by a two-year warranty and Pit Boss's unmatched customer service. If this video did help you, if it gave you some an insight on how to cook your steak on the griddle or even just some more information about the Pit Boss Sierra, make sure and give this a thumbs up. We really do appreciate it. It's one way in which you can support the channel and what we do. Another way you can support us is through our merchandise store. There's a link to that in the description below this video. Our merchandise is brought to you through Digital Promotions who works closely with Crossroads Missions. And Crossroads Missions does amazing service work. In fact, a portion of all the purchases made through the Wall Twins goes to benefit Crossroads Missions and their amazing service work. You know, there's a few other channels. Cooking with CJ did uh, ribeye, I believe, on his TikTok. Make sure and check that out. If I can, I'll put a link to that. Also, Tommy over at Gallery Backyard Barbecue, who inspired us with the steak cook, so we had to do it as well. But man, this thing is awesome. Cannon, let's go eat this up, man. We've got the other one. We've got to wrap it, get that for the rest of the family, but I'm super excited. Aside from coming to make this banger, another steak dish on the griddle. Why else am I doing this? Well, because all I do is twin, even when I'm just singling. And with that, I bid you adieu. And then don't forget to like and subscribe. And griddle on. Feeling in my bones. I could feel it in my face.